Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. Every spring, the Motor Week gang likes to break away and do something different. In the past, we've taken hot coupes to the racetrack and hot hatchbacks to the hills. This spring, we did something completely different. We collected four of America's turnpike cruisers and hit the highway, but not just for the heck of it. This was a classic confrontation. Front drive cars against rear drive cars, Cadillac against Cadillac, Lincoln against Lincoln, town car, Brome, Continental, and DeVille all against the highway. The object? Find the best American luxury car for interstate travel. So off we drove in our Cadillac Brome, Cadillac DeVille Touring Sedan, Lincoln Town Car, and Lincoln Continental. Destination? The Cape Hatteras National Seashore Park on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. In no hurry, we plan to make frequent stops. Passing around the always clogged Washington, D.C. Beltway, we headed south on Interstate 95 towards Richmond, Virginia. Our first stop, a quick preseason visit to one of the area's largest tourist attractions, the King's Dominion Theme Park. King's Dominion is a merry mixture of European architecture and Saturday morning cartoon backdrops with local guides that appeal to kids of all ages. Our host even let us sample the park's latest thrill ride, the Avalanche Bobsled. It has the most exciting curves we've found on our trip. But no car embodies the straight highway theme of our journey better than the Cadillac Brome. With a wheelbase of 121 and a half inches, it's the longest production four-door sedan made in America. Inside, it seems like acres of space covered in like amounts of chrome, plastic wood, and color-keyed leather and vinyl. The $23,846 Cadillac doesn't bother with extraneous information. A speedometer is the only gauge in your line of sight. The fuel gauge is curiously placed in the center of the dash. The rear-drive Brome is powered by a 5-liter V8 that generates 140 horsepower. The fact that it still breathes through a four-barrel carburetor tells you that even Cadillac didn't expect this car to survive as long as it has. Mileage range between 13 and 18, the poorest of our group. The split front bench seats are overstuffed but very flat. You slide around a lot, but the Brome has the smoothest ride. This is a lazy car for lazy travels. You just aim the hood ornament, hit the cruise control, and make miles. And to keep you entertained, there's a simple to operate Delco cassette stereo with big knobs, easy to find buttons, and a fine sound. There's plenty of cargo space here too. The Brome's trunk took a week's worth of luggage for five with room to spare. From Richmond, we headed down I-64 towards Tidewater, Virginia and Williamsburg. There are two faces to Williamsburg now. The best known is its beautiful historic town center. The colonial capital of Virginia was originally restored by John D. Rockefeller and today enchants visitors with its boundless 18th century Americana. But Williamsburg has also become one of the largest bargain basements on the Atlantic seaboard. Shoppers' outlets of all types abound. The granddaddy of them all is Williamsburg pottery. From clay pots to Taiwanese brass, there are tons of future yard sale trinkets to be uncovered. But back to uncovering our four cars. The rear-wheel drive Brome was supposed to be replaced by the front-wheel drive DeVille and Fleetwood, but it hasn't worked out that way. So Cadillac has expertly transformed some cushy sedan DeVilles into firmer DeVille Touring sedans. The option package adds $2,880 to the Ford Horse $23,404 base price. Inside it includes leather instead of velour trim. Although its cherry wood veneer is still made from petroleum, gauges are somewhat more informative than in the Brome. The trip computer and information readouts are too low in the dash for our taste. But our tastes were much more impressed with the DeVille's 4.5 liter V8. Only Cadillac so far makes a front drive V8. Larger and more powerful this year, its 155 fuel injected horsepower was our group's highest. 
Mileage was impressive too, with a range of 20 to 24 over the trip. That V8 power combined with beefy tires makes the DeVille Touring Sedan a fine performer. Its slightly stiff ride gives way to very secure handling and driver confidence not typically found in a Cadillac. We also liked the Delco Bose stereo. Control layout is similar to that of the Brome stereo with a bit better sound, but more tire noise drowned out most of the improvement. And while it looks like you could drown in its trunk, side-by-side -side suitcase space is limited, and we had a hard time fitting all of our belongings. Leaving the Tidewater, Virginia area, we also left the interstates for a while, heading down US 17 to North Carolina. There we found some of the most interesting scenery of our trip, and where else but the dismal swamp. Now a national wildlife refuge, this bog is a treasure for nature lovers. The narrow canal along the edge of the swamp used to be a major commercial shipping route. Part of the inland waterway, pleasure boat cruises are its mainstay now. The $23,373 to start Lincoln Town Car is the second rear drive standard on our journey. Like the Brome, it's largely 20-year-old technology, although Ford has tried to keep it up to date. Power is from a 5-liter V8 rated at 150 multi-port injected horsepower. Throttle response was excellent, and its economy range of 19 to 23 miles per gallon was much better than expected. The digital dash has large readouts with fuel, speed, trip computer, and warning indicators all on the same level. Space is plentiful, and we especially like the thickly padded seats that had cushy side bolsters. Plastic wood surroundings didn't fool anyone, but you could be fooled by the Ford JBL stereo. It's a combination of tape deck and compact disc components. Ford still needs to make some buttons larger though, and our car's speakers were functioning poorly. They couldn't deliver the impressive highs and lows for which CDs are noted. The highway ride of the town car is smooth, although not as effortless as the Brome, but we like the town car's faster power steering. As for luggage space, it was difficult to lift bags out of the town car's deep, oddly shaped trunk, and the top-mounted spare tire takes up much too much usable space. The weather had already begun to deteriorate when we arrived on the Outer Banks. The crashing surf from the graveyard of the Atlantic told us a fierce nor'easter storm was on its way. With little to do except watch our hotel room ceilings leak, we ventured out onto the flooded roads in our quartet and found them all quite stormworthy. Both our DeVille Touring Sedan and the Continental have anti-lock brakes, which worked well on the slick coastal roads. It was 48 hours before we saw the sun peek from behind the Wright Brothers National Memorial at Kitty Hawk. The ocean winds that helped that first powered flight along were still blowing, but now at less than gale force. The only car in our group that could handle the intense side winds without a lot of course correction was the newest car in our group, the Lincoln Continental. With the group's highest base price, $26,078, it is a front-wheel drive luxury sedan based on the Ford Taurus and Mercury Sable. The Continental is clearly Ford's attempt at European-style luxury with an American slant. The interior is roomy, if not as big as the rear-drive cars. Backseat headroom is outstanding. The dash is driver-focused and faced with real wood veneer. Seats were extremely supportive and covered with leather that manages to hold you securely in place. And it was the only car in the group with a full array of engine gauges. The stereo has cassette and CD units similar to the town cars, although the speakers here performed much better. Trunk space is wide and very deep with a bumper height liftover. It swallowed our luggage with ease. A 3.8 liter V6 delivers 140 horsepower. However, it isn't nearly as willing as the DeVille Touring Sedan's V8, but its economy was best of the four with a range of 21 to 27 miles per gallon. We have one big complaint about the Continental. Its technologically advanced automatic airbag suspension tries to be too many things to too many prospective buyers. Firmness adjusts as road conditions, speed, and steering inputs change. In fast corners, the Continental feels very much like a BMW. But when the road straightens out and the speed drops, the Continental feels like a Luxo boat. Nice idea, but the driver's senses end up being confused. We suggest a driver override switch so the firm setting can be locked in when desired. Before we left Nags Head, we made a quick stop at the Rear View Mirror Classic Car Exhibit, one of the best big and little car museums in the country. 
and by the time we made our way up to the Curatuck Sound Ferry, our choices among our big four were pretty clear. Between traditional rear drive models, there was no contest. We unanimously preferred the Lincoln Town Car to the Cadillac Brome. The Town Car's stronger V8 engine, more agile feel, and terrific seats outweighed the Cadillac's smoother ride and larger trunk. But we were deadlocked between the front-wheel drive pair. Half our staff preferred the Cadillac Touring Sedan with its stronger V8 engine and predictable ride and handling. The rest swung to the Lincoln Continental. Its sophisticated electronics, excellent interior, and tight cornering composure drew applause, if not an outright win. But of the four, which is the best for long interstate highway trips? Well, while the front drive twins are lovely, they probably would be too stiff and sophisticated for traditional land yacht cruising taste. That leaves our preference of the rear drive pair, the Lincoln Town Car. Once it looked like the light was going out on the big American luxury car. But as long as Americans drive hundreds of miles in a day at less than a mile a minute, they will remain. Thankfully, they can now deliver more than just lots of legroom and a cushy ride.